National Geographic, Bears. Meet the bears. Do you think you know all about bears? You might have a teddy bear or two. You might see bears on TV, in movies, or at a zoo. But there are some things about bears that might surprise you. Eight species of bear roam the world today. They are found on four continents, but each species looks and acts a little different from the others. Let's meet the bears. What kind of bear do you picture when you think about bears? Maybe you think about polar bears. These snowy white bears live in the freezing Arctic. They are the biggest bears in the world. You might think of giant pandas, the black and white bears that live in China. They munch on bamboo all day. Maybe you think about black bears or brown bears. These two species are common in many places in North America. Some people can look out their window and see a black bear in their yard. Brown bears can be found in the forests of Asia, Europe, and North America. They're the most wide-ranging bears in the world. You might not be as familiar with other kinds of bears. Asiatic black bears are also called moon bears. They have a marking on their chest that looks like a crescent moon. Sloth bears have shaggy black hair. They look like they just rolled out of bed. They mainly live in India. Sun bears are the smallest bears. They grow no heavier than a Great Dane dog. These bears are found in the tropical forests of Southeast Asia. Andean bears have rings of white or golden fur around their eyes. That's why they're sometimes called spectacled bears. Spectacles is another word for glasses. They're the only bears native to South America. Bears of the world. The world's eight bear species live in certain places around the globe. Check out the ranges of the world's bears. Big appetites. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm as hungry as a bear? That person must have been pretty hungry because bears can eat a lot. Many types of bears eat anything they can find. Brown bears, black bears, and moon bears are omnivores. They eat grass, insects, fish, berries, garbage, you name it. Polar bears live in an icy environment where few plants grow. So they mainly eat meat, such as seals and walruses. But like brown and black bears, a hungry polar bear will eat anything it can find. Some bears are pickier eaters. Sloth bears and sun bears eat mostly insects, especially termites and ants. All bears are considered carnivores, but pandas and Andean bears prefer to eat mostly plants. Pandas dine on just one type of plant, bamboo. Andean bears chow down on fruits and palms and will even munch on corn in a farmer's field. Baby bears. When bear cubs are born, mother bears have a big job. Newborn bears are helpless and tiny. They are blind and have almost no hair. Mother bears give the cubs everything they need. They keep the cubs warm and make sure they're safe and well fed. Bears are mammals, so cubs drink milk from their mothers. The cubs grow and put on weight fast. In colder areas, mothers give birth to cubs in a den. Cubs are often born in January or February. The cubs leave the den in March or April when they are big enough to travel. Cubs can't wait to get outside. All bear cubs love to goof around. They tumble, chew, and even swat at a brother or sister. This helps them practice skills they'll need to survive. Bear cubs stay with their mother for one to three years. She teaches them everything she knows about how to live in the wild. Then the cubs are ready to live on their own. Six cool facts about bears. Number one, a polar bear's hair isn't really white. It just appears that way because each hair is clear and hollow. Number two, the biggest bear to ever live was the giant short-faced bear. Almost as tall as an elephant, this prehistoric bear died out between 500,000 and 2 million years ago. Number three, sloth bears have no front teeth. 
They use their mouth like a vacuum to suck up insects. Number four, white spirit bears look like polar bears, but they're actually a rare kind of black bear. Number five, a bear's sense of smell is seven times more powerful than a bloodhound's. Number six, many bear species often give birth to twins. Super sleepers. When winter is coming, the temperature drops and food gets harder to find. What's a bear to do? Settle down for a long winter's nap, of course. Black bears and brown bears find a den and go into a sleep-like state for the winter. This is called hibernating. Not all bears hibernate. Bears that hibernate do it because there isn't enough food to survive the winter. For up to seven months, they don't eat, drink, or even take a bathroom break. To prepare for their long sleep, bears eat as much as they can in the fall. The extra fat gives their bodies energy to survive until spring. A bear's body. Bears have body parts with special abilities that allow them to stay healthy while they hibernate. Here are some cool features of a bear's body. Heart. During hibernation, a bear's heart rate slows down. It goes from 60 beats per minute to 6 beats per minute. This saves energy. In the spring, the heart rate returns to normal. Bones. If a person were to lie still for months, his or her bones would break down. But this doesn't happen to bears. When bears hibernate, a chemical in their bodies prevent bone breakdown. When bears wake up, their skeletons are still strong. Muscles. A hibernating bear doesn't move much for months. In people, this would lead to muscle loss and severe weakness. But a bear's muscles stay strong. There's much we don't understand about hibernating bears. How do their muscles stay strong after not moving for months? How do bears stay healthy after gaining so much weight and then nearly starving? Scientists are studying bears to try and answer these questions. Their findings might also be useful in treating human diseases. Don't be fooled. These animals might sometimes be called bears, but they're not bears at all. Water bear. Tardigrade. Unlike bears, these critters are so small, you almost need a microscope to see them. Tardigrades are tiny creatures that live in moss and other wet places. Koala. If you ever hear people refer to koalas as koala bears, feel free to politely correct them. A koala is a marsupial, a type of animal with a pouch. They live in Australia where there are no native bears. Bearcat. Been too wrong. This critter has a face like a cat, a body like a bear, and a tail like a monkey. But binturongs are related to none of those animals. They're related to small mammals called civets. Red panda. Red pandas and giant pandas share similar names and live in the same region. But giant pandas are bears while red pandas are not. The two species share a common relative that lived millions of years ago, but they're not very alike today. Bears in Books Bears have been popular characters in children's books for a long time. See how some beloved make-believe bears stack up against real-life bears. Paddington enjoys fishing with his family, just like grizzly bear cubs in Alaska. Baloo eats termites and ants, his favorite treats, just like a real sloth bear. Winnie the Pooh Pooh bear will do anything for honey just like some real bears. Bears and people. People have had a special relationship with bears for thousands of years. Bears appear in famous cave paintings done by prehistoric people in France 30,000 years ago. Many other cultures also have lived alongside bears for a very long time. A First Nations tribe in Canada has been teaming up with scientists to study bears. The tribe set up snares to snag bears' hair as they walk by. Scientists check the DNA in the hair. They learn that a lot of bears go through the region to reach fish on the coast. Even the tribe didn't know so many bears travel through the area. It's easy to be in a place where bears live and have no idea that bears are there. That's because bears are good at avoiding people. With their powerful sense of smell, they know you're around long before you can see them. 
Still, it's important to practice good bear manners when you're in bear country. The most important rule, never leave food lying around. Hang food between trees at campsites. Use bear-proof garbage cans. If you spot a bear, keep your distance. Bears are aggressive only when they see you as a threat. Years ago, hunters often killed bears for their fur and meat. In some areas, bears were hunted until they nearly died out. Brown bears once lived all over western North America and into northern Mexico, but by the late 1880s, overhunting had wiped out most of them. In Russia and parts of Asia, moon bear numbers may have dropped by half in the last 30 years. Overhunting is a major factor. But there's hope for bears. In many parts of the world, laws protect endangered bears. Some places have rules that limit bear hunting, and experts have been working to protect bear habitats. The Future for Bears Like many animal species, bears face threats to their future. Some bears, such as sloths and sun bears, struggle from poaching and habitat loss. As people clear forests to get wood or to make farmland, bears have fewer places to live. Polar bears have a different problem. Because the climate is changing and the world is getting warmer, they have less sea ice to hunt on. Scientists agree that humans are playing a large role in the warming trend. Scientists are studying polar bears to see how they are handling their changing home. For pandas, the problem is that only 1,600 remain in the wild. Pandas have the fewest numbers. At the Wolong Panda Reserve in China, a keeper slips into a panda suit. He disguises his scent. He's making sure the young panda cubs don't get used to humans as he teaches them how to survive in the wild. This keeper and others want to boost panda numbers, but they are not the only ones working to help bears. In Churchill, Canada, bears sometimes wander too close to town. In the past, such bears would have been killed, but now workers return these bears to safety in the wild. It's up to us to make the world a place where bears and people can live together. There's so much you can do to help bears around the world. Here are a few ideas. Learn all you can about bears. Books, magazines, and films are great sources. Visit your local library to find out more. Go green. Fighting climate change helps all bears. Save energy by turning off electronics when you don't need them. Walk or ride your bike. Plant a tree. Tell the bear's story. Create bear-related art or stage a play. You can sell tickets to your show and later donate the money to animal welfare groups that work to protect bears.